moving a step closer to crowning a champion here in the Blitzball Battle presented to you by DraftKings. I want to welcome you to our beautiful warehouse in Jersey City, New Jersey. This is my man, Joe McFly. I am Chris Rose. Kelsey Winger is going to join us on the field momentarily. So today, we're going to have somebody advance from the winner's bracket into the championship match. Will it be the one seed, Forgotten Rotten? Will it be the three seed, Team Baggage? We will find out in mere moments. But, Joe's, tell them what they're playing for. $10,000 presented to you by DraftKings. Make sure you guys click the DraftKings Sportsbook app and click on the link in the description and use promo code Tomboy when you do it. Sounds good to me as far as the matchup. Gamesmanship abound thanks to the one seed Forgotten Rotten. Trevor Plouffe, he hasn't given up a run so far in two games for Rotten. Well, guess what? He says, at my age, uh, my back's a little bulky. Knees bothering me. I don't know if my arm can take it. He's been telling anybody that'll listen, I'm not available to head onto the mound. Well, the other side, Team Baggage is calling bullshit. They say, uh-uh, the man is lying. We don't expect to see Vinny Rotino out there on the bump. We expect to see Trevor Plouffe throwing his heat. So the games have already begun. In fact, that game is about to begin. And Joe's, as we suspected, Jake Storiali was 100% right because look who's on the mound. I knew it was funny business. Trevor's going out there, got the inside track on MVP. He's not going to just give that up just like that. Has not given up a hit. Made sure to mention that in the press conference yesterday. Well, if you talk to Ploof and if you know him the way that we do, he could be both telling the truth and lying all at the same time because he is the master of that. He could be sore. His back could be bothersome. But he also, he's a gamer. Yeah. He wants to win the $10,000. More importantly, he wants to shove it right up the you-know-what of his talking baseball teammates, yes. John Boy and Jake. Well, the most nervous person in the room was uh, definitely Vinny, as he was kind of, ah. <laughs> as he was even fooled by his own teammate, and he was thinking that he had to pitch. He was out here early trying to throw uh, a throw right into the strike zone. So here we go. It's a pair of former major leaguers in Ploof and Rotino taking on the greatest content providers in the history of baseball in John Boy and Jake. <laughs> yes, absolutely. You know, they, they actually said, because I was in the cage pregame and talking to them and talking to everybody around, they're saying that they're super loose. Um, now, Ooh. I don't know if that works against them, because uh, they're, they're actually the team that has gone the, you know, basically the most amount of time in between games. Uh, let's see if that rest versus rust thing actually is something. And once again, team baggage going with the Ken Griffey Jr. hat backward. Story Ali has been phenomenal in this tournament. Elite best six hits. Yeah, he's batting 750. Doing pretty good. And here we go. A berth in the championship game is underway. And they throw, oh, but too fast to strike. Oh, and the crowd has started to get inside the head of T. Plouffe. 70 miles per hour, one mile an hour too fast, according to the rules. Yeah, I mean... You know, the number one team that Team Baggage was worried about was actually Forgotten Rotten. Boom, fouled away. And it was specifically because of Trev. Uh, John Boy himself says, man, Trev, I just cannot, you know, I cannot hit him. So let's see how that works out today. But it's a Big swing and a miss. Nice pitch, a riser. Up and away. He's got to compose himself here. Trevor Plouffe, the best two-way player coming out of high school in the 2004 draft out of Crespi. Wow. Well-known private school in Los Angeles. And look at this. He's even telling Jake what's coming. And that was a, a damning wow. move by Plouffe. As Story Ollie knocks it off the wall and then off the back wall. And a leadoff knock. He uh, said, here's what's coming. And he said, great, I'll take it. And that was funny. Right after that, Jake looks at him, does the same move back to him, like, here's your fastball. Yeah, it's a double. Get, get out of here. 
teammates in the podcast world, adversaries on the Blitzball Diamond. That's $10,000. Team, team Baggage has a leadoff double to get things going here in the winner's bracket. That is the first hit Trev has given up in this entire tournament. It's, it's just different from baseball. Well, great pitchers are at their best when times are tough. And for the first time, Kloof has got to work out of the fictitious stretch. The man on second. And he delivers a strike to John Boy. Great pitch up in the zone. Jimmy really broke out of his up. early yeah. Blitzball tournament slump in the last game with four knocks, including the first homer of the tournament, and he takes a hit by pitch. And once again, if a second one happens during the at-bat, you get to reach base. We'll start the game off with two on. Oh, there's too fast to strike, so it is a ball. Look at Ploof. Chatting it up with Vinny Rotino, who's just trying to get his all-star pitcher. Maybe just take a deep breath and a little something off of it. Oh, that was a beauty on the outside corner. Great pitch, a lot of tail there. Started off in the, uh, the left batter's box and uh, was able to hit the corner. Right there. All right, let's see if Ploop is going to give a hand signal to Jimmy like he did to Jake. He does not. Oh, almost near his head, almost hit him, which would have gotten team baggage another man on. Careful with that. Big swing and a miss and a huge strikeout for T. Plouffe, the man known as Special T. Absolutely, man. Got him on that high riser. Let me just swung over that, man. Or under that, sorry. 66 miles per hour. River Plouffe trying to rein it in here. So now the man who hit Plouffe for a leadoff double in this game. Big hack. Boy, talk about somebody who's looking comfortable with the dish, Joes. He looks like he's seen him really well. He feels very, he looks very comfortable up there. Willing to taunt Trev back. You haven't seen too much of that in the tournament. So let's see. Well, if there's anybody at this tournament that can match Blue Ego for Ego, it's the man in the box. Oh, as he looks at a strike. That was beautiful. Lower part of the zone with tail. Jake is even shaking his head, like getting nodding to him. Like, okay, I see you. I see you. Well, he was down in the count when he laced that double off the side and then back wall. And that ball is tapped, and Ploof makes the play. And the number one seed forgotten rotten. It's being called a foul ball oh. down here on the field. Well, it was interesting because the umpire Kyle said it was an out. Kelsey? What's going on here? Let's try and find out. So because Plouf fielded it in front of the line, it's a foul ball. Had he let it roll past the line and fielded it, it would have been an out. A ask which line. That's that little tough. line about 15 tough. feet in front of the plate? Yes, yeah, the They're zone saying one. which line. Have them point. Step, they, they want you walk to point. out there. Walk so out there. This line right here, this whole area is called zone one. Anything past this line is zone two. The ball has to cross into zone two before being fielded for the out. Yes. Do you guys get that? Like if you let it roll past the line, it would Are you upset that you fielded that ball? No, I'm not. It was going foul. I, I got it. It's just I'm a I'm a animal. Hey, ask if he wants animal. to tell us what pitch he's about to throw. Uh, they want to know if you want to tell him what pitch you're about to throw. I'm just going top of the zone, uh, slider, slider, then uh, forcing. Ooh, okay. This is great. Good insight. By the way, Kels, I'm going to put them running shoes on. I see you working <laughs> with your style, kid. <laughs> It could take it forever to get back in that box. What's going okay. on? Well, big, big time delay. A little bit of controversy here at the top of the first. Count 0-2. Oh! Wow. And a nice shot by Story. Ali waited beautifully on the slider. Runners on the corners now. Uh, that's... He's been on his pitching, man. Um, 
Not sure what it is. Trev's got to figure something out against uh, Storiali here. You know, we, are, are we going to have to check the warehouse for loose trash cans? Because Storiali has been all over it. I don't know. I heard some banging in the background. I could be wrong here. Now that brings up John Boy with runners on the corners and one down. If you're new to blitz ball, only two outs per inning. Five pitch walk, not four, but your customary three pitch strikeout. Wow. Got a chance to put one on Trav right now. Oh, big breaking ball. Did it tip? I'm trying to see right here. Well, it looked, it's hard to tell I here. I think they want you guys to see if it was tipped or not. Hard to tell. It's really hard to tell oh, there. Oh, boy. That's really more of an auditory issue. Yeah. I, I think it, whether or not they heard it. We can't see it up here. The people down in the crowd are looking at it. But look at this. Story Ollie's got his nose in the business. They're saying it hit a wire down here. Hit a wire. It's wow. Unplugged, it looks like. The wire. Great it's series, unplugged. by the way. In case you are looking for something to stream these days when you're not watching Blitzball. I need to watch it. I've never seen The Wire. Gotcha. It's all right. We still love you, Joes. K-Mac is on the bench with a bunch of cheesecakes. I don't know what's going on there. I don't well, take a look at it. I mean, let's remember, uh, <laughs> Team McFlurry Power still very up. much in this thing in the loser's bracket. We will later on see them play We Got Ice. And then the winner of that game will face the loser of this game. And speaking of Team McFlurry power, I hope you guys can look down here in the bleachers and see Kyle McDonald with an entire box yeah. of dessert pastries yes. in his lap. I believe he's already consumed four or five of them, which is very impressive. Yeah. Any thought of maybe sending that to the upper deck is uh, greatly well. appreciated. Whoa, Bluth tied him up. Wow. That was one of those rise balls once again. It looked like it was going to hit the top of the zone. Jimmy O'Brien swings and is immediately disappointed. I don't know. He just drops the bat and looks at it. I don't know. And flips it. Pretty bad. Ugh. The 3-1 pitch just misses. So now, Ploof one ball away from loading the bases in the top of the first. Trouble right now. Remember, it's only a two-inning game, so you scratch something again across in your first at bat, that's big time. And he misses, so now the bases are loaded for the hottest hitter in the entire tournament, Story Ali. Kelsey, why don't you check in with team baggage captain John Boy to see how he's feeling about his BFF. Yeah, we're down here with Jimmy on the bench now. Jimmy, Jake's looking pretty good at the plate. You just drew a walk, bases loaded. How are you feeling in the spot against your co-host and Trevor Plouffe? I'm good. You just got to pass it to the hot hand. Walk was the best thing I could do here. Now Jason's going to drive him in. It's a nice pitch. I can't see the high ones. I think he knows that. He can't, you can't see the high ones? No, I think I, he got me twice swinging high where I got tied up. I don't know why. I can't see those. But he's, he's not going to throw the curves that much because it just if you stand up and close, it just hits you. And then uh, he threw a two-strike curve to Jake, and he got a hit. So the two curves he's thrown have uh, not worked out. But I'm gl glad to see y'all's offense has kept intact since that 10 to nothing win. And that ball hammered, and that is a run. A run scoring single. Rotino, though, palms in the air, doesn't quite understand the ruling on that one. Kelsey running out to the field. That's what makes her the best sideline zone reporter. Zone three hits the wall, not fielded. If it's zone two and it hits the wall, it's foul ball. Zone three, not fielded. Let's give a single. Wow. A single. And Rotino, hands on hips, wondering what went wrong here. He and just waited back on that. I'm not sure exactly what happened. He should have attacked that ball a little bit more, tried to get it before it hit that wall. Uh, Baggage has one run on the board against Trev here. And that is huge. Base is still loaded for Jimmy. Would have been a ball anyway because it exceeded the 69 mile per hour rule. I mean, Plouffe has not had to work this hard in an entire game, let alone inning in the tournament so far, Joe. Well, he's been picking and beating up on kids a little bit, and then now he's finally going up <laughs> against the people that have some, <laughs> some advantages. <laughs> so we'll see now. Oh, he tied Jimmy up, but 
That was 84 miles an hour on the swing, not on the pitch. So that is, whoa, hey, umpire Justin giving John Boy a warning. Good job. Good job. <laughs> Just outside, good job by John Boy to lay off. Boy, a critical part of this game. They can break the game open right here. Oh, the crowd is starting to get into it. Trev does not have that slider today. It's not working at all. Uh, I don't know if the gamesmanship and him not warming up pregame is now kind of rearing his ugly head because too fast <laughs> so now we have a full count bases loaded the runners will be off with the pitch there's still no runners but you understand what i mean Jeez, it was a perfect pitch except that it was too fast oh he catches the inside corner for a called strike three kloof gives up his first run of the tournament team baggage takes the early lead but the one seed forgot rotten avoids further damage. Unbelievable pitch right there. That was amazing if you take a look at that. Just make the inside part of the plate. Hard pitch to hit anyway, but great job out of Trevor to not oh, yeah. let that get further. We have seen some amazing talent down on the diamond throughout this blitzball battle presented by DraftKings, but we've also seen some amazing uniforms as well. And guess what? You can look that good at home as well. Mm -hmm. Kelsey Wingard has more on that. Oh, yeah. You see Team Baggage came back with the frog jerseys today. Big day. Are y'all planning on changing into an alternative for the alternate jersey for this any more games today? I think it depends if we win or lose here. A lot on the line for the frog jerseys. Forgotten Rotten with the beautiful powder blue, baby blue throwback jerseys. We love those. Love these jerseys. We're going to wear these in the championship when we get there after we score a couple here. Ooh, ooh shop.johnboymedia.com if you want your own. Did you want to say something? I just hope it doesn't end up one nothing. Vinny's wearing gloves. I don't know why he's so scared to touch the cement over there. Mm. Ooh. Oh, he said he got nothing to say. Shop.johnboymedia.com if you guys want your own jersey. Make sure you're going on our social channels and voting for your favorite jersey of the tournament. Very curious, you guys, um, to get the overarching opinion about the frog jerseys from, from the fans. Oh, I, I mean, I love them. You do? Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, you don't? Uh, They're, I mean, they are on brand for sure. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. By the way, they look uh, good. while you're checking things out, we are giving away $1,000 each to two people who subscribe to this channel. So hit the subscribe button. Maybe give us a thumbs up. Uh, give us a comment. We'll take positive. We'll take negative. We just want something from you. That's all. And in addition to two new subscribers, we're giving away complete Blitzball sets as well. So if you enjoy what you're seeing as far as watching the Blitzball battle presented to you by DraftKings, maybe you can get yourself a free Blitzball set and practice, and maybe this can be you on the diamond next season. We move to the bottom of the first, and for the first time, Joe's Forgotten Rotten is trailing in this tournament. They are, and now they have to face a picture that they have not seen all tournament. Uh, Jake Storiali, who's actually hot with the bat. I, let's see how he does on the mound. What up against Trev here? Oh, Storiali with the triple leg pump. First pitch too high. Kloof, a guy who, uh, who has struggled at times at the dish in this tournament. Five strikeouts so far. Jake, Jake's not a guy that's always serious with pregame. He was super locked in. That ball low. So let's see if Storiali can give the three-seed team baggage a shutdown inning. Let's remember, the winner of this game advances to the championship. The loser heads to the loser's bracket, but will still be alive in the race for 10 grand. Loof pops that up. Storiali gives it a good chase. Oh, look at him. He is pumped up. He's feeling fine. Good to see you, Jake. 
I'm told they could still catch it off the field. Hicks hustling out here, man. He wants it. He smells the finish line almost just because of his energy. Super focused. Oh, one hopper and Story Alley with a diving stop. Look at this, and John Boy throws it against the garage door. This team is pumped up, people. They're on fire right now. Great play, corralling the ball with his body, using his body to be able to secure that ball and to secure the out. He tosses it right over to John Boy, and John Boy yeah. just beams that right to the Kelsey, get out there. Don't worry about breaking his rhythm. You can take it. Rosie's not concerned about breaking your rhythm. You're pretty fired up after making that. And I've actually, this helps. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you guys get that crown ready. Get wow. that crown ready. You, got, you feel good after that cheesecake? Unbelievable. Just need a little boost there. Well, i got to be honest with you. He moved about eight feet to his right to make that play, but the way he was out of breath, it sounded like he just ran the New York City Marathon. I, I don't know if maybe eating those pastries was such a good idea mid-inning, but we'll see. Vinny Rotino has had a hot bat in this tournament, and now he's got a hot butt because it just got grazed. Take a look. Interesting defensive scheme here. John Boy is playing the left side, playing the opposite field for uh, team baggage. Kind of the strategy there. Well, I believe that would be on the right side. That's our left, where we our are. Our left, yeah. yes. Uh, yeah. Rotino taps one foul. That was a great pitch there from, uh, from Jake. Nice slider outside. Vinny Rotino hitting 429 in this tournament. Does have three hits so far. Oh, and he looks one right down the dick. Jake is painting out here. Awesome pitch, bottom of the zone. Rotino. Played 62 major league games over parts of five seasons. Now currently the Brewers pre and post game host. Like to make a little news of his own here. Oh, look at the major delay. Oh, ho, ho. do you know what sort of quad strength you have to have for that? And calf strength? Of course, he ended up bouncing it about eight feet short. Maybe you thought it was cricket. Yep. Oh, another break. Uh, just pitch mix. You know, I've got a nice little cutter, but I don't want to hit the batter because I already hit him once. So we're just going to make this one up on the fly. It's a momentary little seizure. We got a request for a substance check. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. We switched balls. There's a substance check. Substance check. Go over oh. to Ploof and ask him. <laughs> there we go. Jake's taking off his pants. The hat is off. Who called for the substance Who check? Who called for the substance check? Oh, Vinny did. Vinny wanted to switch the balls out. Need a substance check. I don't know what they're doing back there. They're huddling up after every pitch. Let's go. Let's play some ball. Let's go. This has been a very slow-moving opening frame. I mean, I get it that the winner advances to the championship match. But still. Oh, I need to get those pants off. <laughs> very deliberate. Uh, didn't you just heard BBD talking about somebody's pants off? Not yes, sure BBD that. wants Jake's pants Ooh, off. Wow. Oh, look at this. He got Rotino off balance, a defensive swing, and Storiali with the easy field on that one. So we are through one in this winner's bracket showdown. Team Baggage with a one nothing lead. Time once again to check in on the diamond with Kelsey. It's a big day for us here. We are playing our championship game, our semifinal games here today, and we couldn't be here without our good friends at DraftKings. So remember, for first for first time, sir, <laughs> did he put a bit blitz ball on Oh my, my god, head? are you okay? <laughs> Are you having a seizure? No, but I do think somebody just touched my head when I was walking over here. Oh but God. I do know that it was not DraftKings who touched my head. So make sure you guys are going on to their app, seeing all that they have to offer. First-time users can get up to $1,000 in free deposits with your first deposit using the promo code JOHNBOY. The link is in the description of this video. Bringing it up to Vinny now. Vinny, you just really 
got the crowd going with the ball check over there. You wanted to get the substance check. The ball switched out. They got onto Trev in that first inning, something they haven't been able to do in the previous matchups versus you guys. What's the difference today? Yeah, I think, you know, we thought we were going to be able to walk through this match. Obviously, they came to play. I don't know if they're doctoring up the ball. Possibly they got special bats in there, too, as well, I'm guessing. Um, it's home cooking a little bit. Yeah, I mean, the umpires are on their side. The crowd's on their side. We're going to have to play. You can't get y'all two former big leaguers. Come on. Y'all can't lose. Y'all can't lose. And are they using special bats or they they've gone away from the yellow bat it looks like but they still do have Trevor Plouffe's donuts out which was very exciting for some of the players on deck yesterday wait donuts sounds like a good business idea wait donuts yeah look at Jake's bat oh that he just hung up oh all right I, donut I, on there oh, okay I thought um, not the good donut all right the weighted donut sorry <laughs> hey have you seen my fat ass I'm, I'm enjoying the other kind of donuts same. All right, top of two. The early favorite for star of the game, Storiali, stepping in. He's been all over this game. Yeah, listen, he got this team going with a leadoff double in the first, then a shutdown inning on the mound. Ooh, big bender. This is definitely interested to see how Trev attacks them now in this inning. Um, Considering that he already, you know, how tough it was in the other inning. Well, Storiali, three for three as he looks at a called strike. That was a beautiful pitch. Barely catches the zone on the outside. Look at that. Nice trail. Beautiful. Bluff, he's thrown 32 pitches, 17 for strikes, which is a remarkable percentage in blitz ball. Whoa, tied him up. And he, he did go, says umpire Kyle. Definitely went. You look at the replay there. It definitely looks like he broke the plane. Awesome pitch. Inside. I think they're looking at. Are they trying to look at replay over there to see if he did go? He did. I'm surprised you'd be able to keep up with the. You know, I always thought that uh, using electronics in the dugout was illegal. But hey, who am I? I'm just the dad bod dude who calls the game. Two two. That hit the leg. Oh, it did. Whoa. Fast. Well, there was a lot that happened there. Yeah. We're going to have to take another look at that pitch. First of all, did it hit the bottom rung of the strike zone? They're saying it hit the post. But regardless, it was 71 miles an hour. Oh, so it's a ball anyway. Right. Did they get that call correct up on the, on well, the board up there? It doesn't matter. It was 71 miles an hour. So yeah, no, I'm saying that it's a ball. Oh, oh the shot. It hit the roof. That and is, that's a single. That is a double. It hit the back wall after it caromed off the ceiling. One of the ground rule quirks of this beautiful warehouse in Jersey City. Oh, single. What a remarkable shot. That was a double, right? Hit him. Ceiling wall. What? Seriously. Single? That's double. a single. Did it hit the back wall? They're calling it a double down here. Justin, that's a double. That's a double. Yes. Well, I got what? I, I got one guy doing this. I got. I'm hearing single. I got double. I mean, Chris Rose. Chris what Rose, Justin, come on. I you know, but it sounded like you're Joe, saying Joe's single. Joe's told me that this means double. It does make double. Best. I got it. Holy smokes. I do think that <laughs> they the should problem. also get an extra base for retrieving the ball that fell out of the ceiling. There was another. There was a second ball. There was a second ball that fell out from this part of the ceiling when that ball hit the ceiling over there. So now we are up one blitz ball better than we were when this, that at bat started. Not sure how high it was on that wall, but I believe if, uh, if Vinny would have caught that on the fly, it would have been, been an out. out. Yes. been an out, yep. All right, so once again, second straight inning, Storiali with a leadoff double. Trev has nothing for Jake. Nothing. He has absolutely nothing for yeah, Story Alley, four for four in this game with a pair of extra base knocks. And the lone RBI. 68 mile an hour strike to start out Jimmy. Really nice pitch. He looked to start pitching him inside a little bit more. Big bender over the head of O'Brien. Co-founder of John Boy Media. The brainchild of the Blitzball battle presented by DraftKings. 
Oh, he's, he swung at it, and it hit him. That should be a strike, and it is. Yes. Swing definitely supersedes the hit by pitch. I think this is definitely the person that Trev has to get out, being that Jake is a guy that being he that cannot, he can't get Jake out. Absolutely, good has, idea. Has to get John Boy out. Um, was not been able to do anything against him. Uh, they want to check the speed on the last pitch. I believe that was on the swing. I mean, I can't tell if that's a 72 mile hour swing. So it was a ball, I do believe what it was called because of the 72 miles an hour. So now after that foul ball, we got a 2-2 count. That ball hit right up the middle and O'Brien has his first knock of the afternoon, putting runners at the corners with nobody out. First and third. I'm starting to first think and third, that maybe out. Trev's back actually does hurt. <laughs> Not sure what's going on, but uh, maybe he's trying to gut through something. They're peppering him all over the stadium. And here we go. He has turned into the Mike Trout, or today perhaps the Shohei Otani, but a nice fielding job on a couple of hops by Rotino to retire Storiali. The runners hold at first and third. Finally retired. Man. That thing was spinning pretty nuts. So now if somehow Plouffe dodges a bullet here, he can get his team into the dugout down just a run, heading into the bottom of the second. Big swing and a miss right down the middle. Yeah, John Boy definitely feels like he should have put that one in play. Look at his face. Oh, man. Oh. Big bender there. Jimmy got his first hit of the day, his previous at bat. A chance to give Team Baggage a 2-0 lead, at least. Oh, swing and a miss. Looks like Poof takes just enough off of that one. Yes. It has just enough chance to keep him off of this pitch. A really good pitch right now for Trav would be a riser right now. The one that Jimmy says that he cannot hit himself, so. Just making him think a little bit. Jake is clearly carrying this team. Um, so I need to get this guy right here. How did Jake not get drafted? Holy crap, he can hit. <laughs> Jake's the best hitter I've ever seen. Wow, what a compliment from Trev. Feeling very generous with his words this morning. Wow, that is impressive. The best pitch right now. Fastball, rising fastball, up and in right now. Oh, blue playing to the crowd. And there it is. You called it, Joe's McFly. You are the Tony Romo of Blitzball. It's just what happens right there. That's just a pitch that he just cannot hit, has not proven that he can hit it. I don't know what's going on between Storiali and Oh, hey and now. I'm separate. not the same. I'm not the same. Wow. Holy smokes. Oh, this is only this is a one-run game right now. A lot of pressure for Gotten Ryan to tie this game up. off the bottom of the second frame against Story Ali, none other than Trevor Plouffe. Bragging rights on the line, too, more than $10,000. Hey. <laughs> Umpire Kyle wants to know that there was almost a warning there for both benches. Also, wanted to just tell Jake that Vinny is over here saying he cannot believe you weren't drafted. Trev's over here saying that you're the best, best hitter he's ever seen in his life. How does that feel to hear your opponent speaking about you like that? I mean... <sighs> Game recognized game a little bit, but uh, you know, I uh, I always thought that way. I thought our varsity coach was kind of an asshole and made a bad choice, and it's all coming out today. What's his name? Uh, Eisenbach. <laughs> 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 Hope yet, he's watching. You had a coach named Eisenbach? Oh, I don't know wait, if he made that up or if that was really the name. Wait, Jim Eisenreich? Who, who was his coach? Sometimes you could get in the head of your opponent if you compliment them a little bit too much. You could cut the intensity a little bit. 
Curious to see who BBD is cheering for in this matchup when you have three of your hosts going at it against each other. Are you going for Team Baggage or are you going for Forgotten Rottens? Oh, Forgotten Rotten, uh, Trevor, there's at least a chance I'd get some of that money. So oh. Jimmy and Jake would never do that for me. Trevor might. <laughs> We're cheering for Forgotten Rotten. BBD needs to cash money. All right, here we go to the bottom of the second. Story Ali has done it all. At the dish, on the mound, he is your blitzball version of Shohei Otani right now. And he is certainly the front runner for our blitzball player of the game. I mean, MVP at this point. I mean, the perhaps, way that it's looking. Perhaps tournament MVP. Quick reminder, you will help decide who is the blitzball tournament MVP. Just you can vote away on our social media channels. I heard you just say that he's pitching like Shohei Otani. Is that what you said? I said he is our modern day Shohei Otani since he's doing both. Well, you see, he described his abilities, his offensive abilities, as Tyler Wade in looks, Otani slash Bonds on the juice in terms of abilities for Jake. Yeah. <laughs> well, we knew that Jake was on the juice. Ball Man. one. If he had said skinny Barry Bonds, <laughs> wouldn't have gone with that. Big at bat here for Plouffe. Got to get something going. Lead off double will do wonders. Well, he's ahead in the count, so he can pretty much pick his spot right here. Ooh, Storiali in dangerous waters. He falls behind. The man with 106 career show homers, 3-0. and oh. And that ball smashed. That is a single. And uh, they, they looked a little bit more locked in the box right now, and... Not only that, but like I mentioned earlier, the compliments could have gotten to Jake, could have broken his, in, his intensity just, just enough. So now Vinny Rotino, who has had some walk-off magic before in this tournament, puts it one high and tight and gives Storiali a glance. Another pitch out of the zone. Swing and a miss. Couldn't deal with 63 on that one. That was a really good pitch up in the zone. It was a riser at the end, too. Now you see me, now you don't. Still hit the top of the zone. Jammed him, and that is a foul ball. So now Storiali ahead in the count, one and two. Latino from the same hometown as Former NBA player, Karan Butler. Also former Cowboy quarterback, Tony Romo, trying to become a legend as well. Cowboy switch sides on defense. Interesting. Maybe he's just meandering around. Yeah, I know. <laughs> trying to get his steps in, Joes. Crowd is getting into it. Oh, oh and outside. And the speed was a problem, too, at 70 miles an hour. Actually, Jake's actually proud of that. Yes. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh, look at John Boy. He's putting it under his armpits, putting it under his frog jersey. Oh, some funny business going on with that Yeah, ball. you might have some frog jizz on that thing. You never know. Empires are not watching them as they are afraid nope. of getting fired. What's going on down there, Kelsey? There was a discrepancy on what the count should be. Trev was wanting to see if we could review something, but it has been overruled by every other person down here, and we are not overruling or looking at it. So the count is 3-2. Trev thought the count was 4-2. Oh, now Rotino has worked the count full. Good patience at the plate. You have no idea how hard it is to stay off of that, that riser right there, especially at the end. A lot of mid-diamond meetings happening for both teams. A lot of consultation going on here. And that is ball five. The one seed, Forgotten Rotten, has got the 
first two men on against Storiali. They got something going here. They got something going in this inning. First and second, nobody out. One run game, and Trev is up. Yep. And Ploof looks at a 45 mile an hour pitch. Do we have something that it's a ball if it's too slow, also? Um, sure, but I mean, I'm trying to see if that ball may have hit him. It looks like I see some jersey moving a little bit. Trev's saying it hit underneath his arm and his jersey. I did. Trust me, I don't want, I don't want to get on base like this. Well, what was the rule? Uh, Albert was, Bell, maybe? I'll say no. They're asking for a review, uh, so let's take another look and see if it hit. If it nicked his jersey, it's also a hit by pitch. Now, this is critical because if you get hit by a pitch twice in a bat, you yeah. take your base. It definitely hit him. It definitely hit him. I mean, definitely it hit him. felt like a little chicken wing. We knew it hit him, but it felt like a little chicken wing. But the ball was in the – it, it, it wasn't him. in the strike zone. Saying the ball wasn't in the strike Yeah. Sorry. So that should be a hit – one hit by pitch. Just so that the umpires understand. I love it when the broadcasters are telling the umpires what yeah. they're called. Yeah, I love it. You know, that's – Chris pretty much where we are in pro the sports these days. The this is messed up. Balls hit off the ceiling and foul. Story Alley Boy, I thought, I thought Story Alley was going to lay out for that one on the concrete. <laughs> I was ready for him to eat concrete, but it didn't happen. Let's hold out hope. You know what it was? He didn't want to hurt the moneymaker. Uh, Let's be honest. Or if he had landed on his belly, he would have shot straight up into the, yeah. into the ceiling. Is my guess. Belly flopping. That was the form we saw from Aaron Bossy yesterday. Yes. Picked up the chin very quickly, which was very smart. That ball hit off the ceiling, and it falls fair for a single. So the bases are loaded with nobody out, and Vinny Rotino at the dish. And look at Ploof talking shit to Story Alley. What is going on? Some cake for Jake. Some Jake's cakes coming out here to feed him. Okay, Mac. We're all right. Okay. We just got to fill it up and attack the zone. We got defense behind us. Yeah. Okay. So. You don't need any. You don't need any. You shouldn't. It's kind of like when you reward a dog. You need to reward them when they're being good. <laughs> I'm just trying to get you on the right track. I'll be coming for that soon. Or you just take it. He's trying maybe. to pressure him into taking the food. Base is loaded, nobody out right now. It's a big spot. It's only a one-run game. It feels like it should be. It feels like Baggins should be up by a lot more. Um, and it's only one, one run. Missed opportunity really in the first to add more than one run. And now mm, when Trev you let the Trev is asking for somebody seat. to get tossed from the stands. Oh, what's going on? Trev's asking for Drew Davis to be ejected from the stadium. That wow. Drew is in my face. I'm on deck and in a like. Uh, game to go to the finals and I got this kid you know trying to make money off my face wow well uh, Drew Davis the youngest competitor here at uh, 20 years old he's just trying to be an entrepreneur what did I say about beating up on kids guys bases loaded nobody out for Rotino oh he tried to jump on that first pitch high heat looking at the pitch here if he, I already know he feels like that's a pitch he should have hammered the opposite oh. way Looks like he's aiming over there like since he feels like the track. defense is not there. Now, John Boy is moving over to the other side. Yeah, it looks like they're playing a shift. Storiali pumps five times. Ball ripped foul. Jake and John Boy come so after every pitch. It almost feels like because of the different positioning on defense, it almost feels like he's telling them what pitch is coming. As a batter, he's probably looking side right now. Big swing and a miss, and Story Alley gets him. <laughs> I mean, you can oh, just tell there. Oh, Rotino pissed. It's a big spot. Yelling inside of his own jersey. Can't believe he's been done in by a guy who's not even tall enough to ride all the rides at Disneyland. That was a pitch right, as, as I called it, right there, Rotino. I'm not sure what else he was looking for there. Inside corner, able to get him out, swinging and missing. 
That was a big spot there, man. So, of course, it has all come down to this. A pair of great friends off the blitz ball diamond. Lou looking for a possible walk-off winner. Storiali trying to slam the door shut. Oh, Kloof rips it, perhaps going after Drew Davis. Uh, yeah, just about to say that. Uh, <laughs> beating up on kids is uh, forgotten rotten. It's just low. I was waiting for his. He understands that this is the spot right now. It feels like he could definitely tie this game against Jake. Inside. Let's remember what is on the line. The winner advances to the championship game. The loser heads to the loser's bracket. We'll have to win one more just for a rematch in the title game and a shot at $10,000. This is such a great game here, uh, the ending to end, regardless of the, of the result here. Just great. We've seen some great stuff happen here. Base is loaded. One out. Oh, yeah. Wiggly leg here. Yeah, that's like the Clevenger. And look at this. Floof calls and gets time. Great call from Floof there. He's just too much funny business on the mound. Try starting to chirp. Oh! Big swing and a foul tip by Ploof. I definitely feel that like he should have put that one in play. Knocked that one the opposite way. Go. Go. Tempting top part of the zone there. Three two. Cannot walk him. Jake has to throw a strike right here. Don't want to go to a full count. Then he can hardly stand the suspense down here. He's been hiding in his clothes and his hat, now ducking behind the bench here. <laughs> Attention with a knife right now. It's unbelievable. Once again, consulting John Boy on the mound. Else? Trev, what are you looking for right now? Uh, anything over the plate. I mean, he knows this is my zone. This is my box right here. You got to come in. This is it. Ooh, all the time again. Maybe a little too much thinking for Story Ollie. Sure. Dang getting the crowd right now. Getting in his head. Yeah. That was a good Big swing and a miss, and Story Ollie has done it. Team Baggage knocks off the number one seed and gets the celebratory pastry on top. Unbelievable pitch. He threw him an off-speed pitch at the end. Got him to swing over it inside corner. He's being crowned. Ooh, unbelievable. And they're hugging in the middle of uh, the diamond. Line. And no question who the blitz ball player of the game is as his teammate John Boy places the crown on top of the head of the one and only Jake Storiali. Pitches a shutout. Drives in the game's lone run. He is standing by with Kelsey Wingert. He did it, guys. He did it. Our blitz ball player of the game, our boss, Jake. Jake, the intensity there, you could just, you could cut the tension with a knife. It comes down to you versus Trevor Ploof. Take me through that at bat and what you were trying to do there. You know, Trev's my guy. Trev's my guy. I didn't want to hang one. 
uh, you know, you saw us stepped off during that uh, the full count, and uh, I was going to pump it. I was just going to pump it because he hadn't been hitting that. Uh, and I've actually I got a little control with my cutter a little more, so I just started at him right in there. Uh, game. Let's talk about what you did at the plate. You started out the game four for four versus Trevor Plouffe, who I believe hadn't given up a hit in the tournament so far. How are you guys able to get to him today? You know, I'm just seeing the ball good right now. I'm seeing the ball good right now. I slept four hours last night, four hours, and I just ate so much of that cheesecake stuff that, like, I feel at home. I, I feel at home. Yeah. Is that weird? Yeah. Would David Cohn be proud of your pitching? I think he would be. I think he, I think he really would be. Um, I think Coney would be proud of my pitching. I think, uh, you know, I'm, you, Kels, here's the thing. I'm a content guy. So, you know, did I need to load the bases? No. But we're trying to make a good product here. So I uh, hope everyone was entertained. I was never nervous that I was going to blow my really good game and that it was going to be a walk-off loss. I never thought of that. I wasn't thinking that at all. Deep breath there. All right, our Blitzball player of the game, our boss, our friend, our ace, Jake the Frog. Congratulations on the win. Congratulations on finally beating Trevor Plute. Thanks, Kels. Back to you guys in the booth. <laughs> all right, well, thank you, Jake. See, he does it all. He's even uh, taking Kelsey's job as well, although we don't want him anywhere near a microphone in the near future. So Trev as, would like an interview. Oh, wow, okay. Well, let's send it back down to the field. Just going to give him the mic because I don't know what we're talking about. I'm going to give all credit to Jake Storiali. Jimmy O'Brien stinks, and Jake has carried him this entire tournament. Hmm. So I'm wondering, did Trev just switch it from Jake sucks to Jimmy sucks? Wow. You can't make that switch. Well, uh, you know what? Let us know in the comments what you think about that possibility. Uh, we could have... Hats and T-shirts printed by sometime tomorrow, okay. I guess. I bet you they could. The gauntlet I think Trev just changed it. The gauntlet has been thrown <laughs> down. Kelsey Winger, great job as always down on the field. So time right now to take a look at the bracket. Forgotten Rotten heads down to the loser's bracket and will face the winner of our next game, Mac Flurry Power against We Got Ice. And as for the three seed, Team Baggage, they are off to the title game. They win one more, and they will pocket $10,000. Hope you're having as much fun as we do here at the Blitzball Battle, presented to you by DraftKings for Joe's McFly, Kelsey Wingard, and our cast of thousands here at John Boy Media. I'm Chris Rose. We'll see you next time. I got a little cocky first inning, showing what pitch I was throwing. Uh, Jake got real co uh, confident after he got that first hit. And I got to say, Jake, how's a ball player. How did he not get drafted? Yeah. The dude rakes. Like, Jimmy, a... Jimmy absolutely stinks. Trev thinks he knows the mental game, but he doesn't. Because mm -hmm. Jake's in his head like crazy. Trev's That's mental. why he came here and he just shit talks to me. Yeah. Trev's a mental Trev, agent. Trev is legitimately scared of Jake. We'll see him again. And this time it's gonna be for all the marbles. And this time Jake's hand might be like a little like this. And us, we're like stoked. Yeah, was... Like we'll tip the cap on this game because yeah. he did he three uh, four and two right there. Nice front door cutter to me. Great mm. pitch. We'll have one moment, my hand and Trevor's man hand collided. You guys almost had a baby.